back to another episode of More Sewing with Michelle. My name's Michelle Rank and I've got a special treat for you today. I want to show you some of the techniques I do when I create and finish a quilt. So it's the quilting process and it's all around a walking foot. Now I stumbled across the books that I had before um, in back of me and I thought, oh, what a great tool for anyone to dive into actually finishing their own quilts at home on their domestic machine. And I know a lot of people um, are a little bit stressed or they don't have the confidence to completely finish their quilt on their own domestic machine. And I wanna help you get that confidence level up. I wanna teach you things that have to do with your walking foot. And it doesn't matter if you have a traditional walking foot like this, or if you have one that's integrated to your machine a little bit differently. I'm gonna go over lots of things and it all has to do with your walking foot. So today on More Sewing with Michelle, we're gonna get walking and let's get going. Okay. So let's dive into walking feet. First are, what are they? Now a walking foot can look lots of different ways like I showed you before. This happens to be the one that I use here on my Janome machines. Now, what I want you to do, if you're not familiar with your walking foot or what even a walking foot is, um, contact your local sewing machine dealer, moors-sew.com you can reach out to us there or you can contact any one of our local um, storefronts and we'll be able to help you. But what you wanna make sure that you provide to the person when you call is the make of your machine and also the, um, the title of your particular machine, the model number. So on mine here, you can see it's a Janome and over here on the side, it's a Memory Craft 9400. And that way when you contact your dealer, they'll be able to find the correct walking foot for your machine. And like I said, um, you can call one of our stores or go to moors-sew.com and we'll be able to help you. That's the kind of the first step. So you have to do a little bit of investigation to make sure that you have the right walking foot for your machine. Now our books by Jackie Gehring, oh my gosh, they are so cool. Um, when I saw them, I knew it was something I wanted for myself and keep in mind, I've been completing my own quilts for years, but I love tools to help me get um, better and also to give me options and ideas for doing more type of quilting. Now, when I speak of quilting, what I mean is um, basically when you're um, piecing, you're putting the pieces of your quilt together. Quilting is the last step when you're making your quilts. It's when you're attaching the top piece of fabric to the batting to the backing. And that you need to kind of um, quilt and you need to stitch around in different areas to make sure that it is gonna stay permanent together. And that's where the walking foot comes in. Now, Jackie, oh my gosh, these books um, give you so much information. And this is the first one and you can see not only does she go step by step, which I've only got 20 minutes here with you guys today, but she gives you lots of different um, patterns and ways to do your quilting. Now 2.0 is another great book. It's an add-on. So you really wanna get both books. This one is gonna give you even more ideas. And she goes step by step and it's just, amazing. You're going to love these books and I want you to feel confident about your quilting. So let's talk quickly about what a walking foot does because I've got a bunch of samples I want to show you as well as I want to stitch some of them out and show you just how easy it is to use your walking foot to get perfect results. So a walking foot. So this is mine here and what a walking foot does Basically, all machines have a feed dog if it's a sewing machine. Now your feed dogs are located down here and those, those metal things that look like teeth. Now some machines will have two. On my machine here, I've got several lines of teeth 
And what those teeth do is, as the machine's running, it grabs that fabric and it pulls it forward, which allows your needle to do the stitching. So it'll pull, stitch, pull, stitch, pull, stitch. Now the problem is that if you have multiple layers or if you have slippery fabric or stretchy fabric, oftentimes it will pull the bottom, but the top, it's almost like a shift. It doesn't pull the top because it's not gripping that piece. And you'll get a slight, the bottom will be pulled further in than the top layers, um, and if then you get what we call puckers and pleats. And we don't want that. So you want to use a walking foot. And like I said, it's not just for quilting. If you are working with that stretchy fabric or also slippery fabric, it's going to help for you to control your fabric layers so that when the needle goes up and down, everything is stitched perfectly. And that's in a nutshell what a walking foot does. It allows you to have all that fabric pulled at the same rate so that needle will penetrate and stitch them straight up and down. And that's what we want. So that's what a walking foot does. Now, walking feet, like I said, are different depending upon the make of your machine and also the age of your machine. So check out which one you need. Some of them um, will attach to your needle bar, kind of like when you change out your ankle, they'll attach there. Other of them will drop down and be engaged into your machine. Um, and there's a mix all the way around. Another thing that's important is to know your machine because sometimes you need to change the settings on your machine to make sure that your machine um, is actually using that walking foot to its best ability. Um, I know on my other Janome, I have to hit that, otherwise it doesn't do the stitching correctly. So you're gonna need to look in your manual once you get your walking foot and just verify how your particular machine uses that walking foot to get the perfect stitching that we're looking for. Now with that said, I wanna show you that mine here, oftentimes um, walking feet will have additional attachment. And you can see right here, this is a, the basic walking foot that I have, but on mine, you're gonna love this. I can change out the basic, like the sole of the foot of my walking foot, so that depending upon what I'm doing, it will make it easier or better for me. Now on my particular machine, I have a stitch in the ditch attachment, I have a zipper attachment, I have a quarter inch seam allowance, which, oh, that one gets used all the time. But my favorite one for when I'm using my walking foot and I'm doing detailed quilting is this one, which is the open toe. Now you'll see that this area here allows me to see exactly where my needle is going up and down so that I can make sure if I have made lines, if I have drawn out a pattern, or if I'm following some other thing, um, I can see exactly where my stitching's going. And that's important to make you be successful. So another thing that's really important is I am guilty of this hand down. If you see me, I am a fast quilter. I am always stitching in the fast lane. So with a walking foot on your machine, you wanna drop the speed down. And I go to about half. So I'm usually, like I said, here in the fast lane. I'll drop it down to about half because think about it, it's called a walking foot. It's not called a running foot. You wanna walk. And the reason that you wanna walk is to make sure that the stitches are perfectly formed. If your machine is going pedal to the metal and your walking foot's on there, there's a possibility that you might get skip stitches. So take your time. Keep in mind when you have your walking foot on, you wanna be the turtle, not the hare. And that way you can make sure that all the time energy that you put into um, your quilting, you're gonna have perfect stitches. Now let's get a little bit closer into my machine and I wanna show you some actual stitching being done. So if you go to mores-sew.com or click on the link in our description, you'll be able to purchase this wonderful book, Walk, 
and also the second one, Walk 2.0. They're both amazing, and I guarantee you, you're going to learn a lot about using your walking foot on your domestic machine. Pick them up. So let's talk real quick about how you're going to use um, these books to make some quilting. You can see here that I have channel quilting, which is pretty much so one of my favorite things to do. Um, it gives your quilts more of a modern feel, but I've got other samples to show you as well. But the way that you do that is you're going to want to have a marking device. I love these general pencils. They're amazing and they do a great job. Now, if you're marking on a light surface, you're going to want a light colored chalk or chalk pencil. If you're doing on dark, then you're, oh, I just said that backwards. If you're marking on a light surface, you want a dark pencil and just the opposite if you're doing something on a dark. This is kind of in between, but I like using the white only because it seems to disappear easier than a dark pencil. Now, keep in mind, when I get done with my quilts, the first thing that I do, as I've told you before, is I drop them in the washing machine, and that way all the lines go away completely. So you'll use whichever marking device you want on your quilt to help you get this done. And I've used just my ruler, and I made all my lines, and that's how I did this channel quilting. Now, you'll see that I have here the walking foot with also the quilting bar on there. And that just gets attached, let me hold it up real close, to a hole on the side of your walking foot. And that helps you gauge and make sure that everything is perfectly spaced each time that you do one of these lines when you're doing a channel quilt. And like I said, in the books, Jackie does an amazing job. It's showing you pictures and giving you examples on how to do this perfectly. So pick up the books and you're going to get, you know, the one, two, three, fours on how to do it perfect job. So this is um, basically channel quilting. Now there's lots of options. You can go even closer. Um, and I think she calls it matchstick quilting. But I want to show you how you take this one. This one is called Shattered. And with Shattered, you'll see that it is just lines in lots of different directions. And I'm going to go ahead and sew some of those here now. So let me put this one down. I've got my machine set up with my walking foot. I have the speed drop down. I'm going to line it up. Let me put the books out of the way. And I'm going to do, I see the third spot right here. I want to add a line. So I'm going to simply kind of just randomly start stitching. And I'm going to make sure that my stitch length, I do this one at 2.0. I'm going to drop my foot. I'm going to do the anchor at the start. And of course, my thing is saying my bobbin might not be filled, but I just put it in. And now I'm going to do some stitching. And once again, like I said, it's a walk. It's not a run. And all I'm doing is allowing my machine, the feed dogs, to do the work. And it'll completely pull it through 100%. Now, for the sake of this show, I am going to speed it up just a little bit more so that we're not here until tomorrow watching this machine pr stitch it out. But that's what you want to do. Just let the machine go at its own pace and stitch completely across. Now this is for the shattered stitching here. And I'm almost done here. And there we go. And I'll show that real close up to you so that you can see the look of the shattered stitching. Now I love this look. Um, on a modern quilt, it's just going to be absolutely gorgeous. So this one is called Shattered, and you'll see all the information in her book. Now let me show you another one that people um, tend to have problems with. And this one is a curved element that I'm going to be using my walking foot to show you. So let me attach 
my quilting bar to the walking foot on the machine and you simply slide it into the side and I'm going to make sure that it's set up at the right distance by simply pulling that over and if you get in real close you can see my needles on one line and now the bar is following the other line so I'm going to pull that up pull the thread to the back once again I am going to whoops I have to turn it the other way I'm going to use this bar to follow the line but I'm going to start it there and because this is what I've told you before, quilt wrangling. I kind of fold up the quilt so it's out of my way. I'm going to hit the tack down stitch to start. And it's going to tack and then it's going to go. And then all that I do is simply shimmy my quilt around to follow this bar. And what it will do is a mirror image of the stitch line that I did before. And when you're done, it really gives it a geometric and really cool feel to any quilt. And like I said, this is something that everyone can do at home. Now this pattern, if you were doing it on the straight line, would be um, a cross hatch. But because I, whoops, let me hit the right button here. Because, and let me pull this out to show you that line that I just stitched. Because I have curves on it, it has turned it into a curved cross hatch. Isn't that cool? Can you see all the different things that you can do with this? And I just love the way it looks. And it's completely random and you can do it to your own liking. Now I wanna show you one other quilt. Look at this one. I think what I'm gonna do is just hold it up this way for this camera here. And you can see, it reminds me of um, a very detailed um, spinal graph. Do you guys remember that? But basically all I've done is taken the ruler, I made lines on the corners, and I marked out the same distance all the way across on all the different sides. And then what I did was simply take my ruler, make a line from one to the other, and then just simply stitch those lines out. If you look really closely, you can see that you can still see those white lines from my pencils. But once this gets washed, oh my gosh, is it going to be amazing. And wouldn't that be cute to have something fussy cut on the center? Um, but standing alone, oh my gosh, it's just gorgeous. So those are some of the things that you can do. And let me show you some other samples that I have. Okay, so I've got some samples that I've made that I want to show you some of the different type of stitching that you can do. Now this one here is once again done with my walking foot and this is called cross hatch. And you can see I just have those lines the distance away using that quilting bar. And is it, it's just one of those things that you can fill up your quilt, you can do it at home on your machine. So this is cross hatch. Now the next one I have here, this turtle, it's actually called channel quilting here. So you can see in the back, I've done all these channel quilting. Now, you don't have to limit yourself to just that type of stitching. You can see I've also added free motion stitching on top of the channel quilting. And I've also done decorative stitches around the turtle. I've used the channel stitching as the backdrop. So get creative, totally make it your own, but you can do this at home on your own machine. Now the next one that I have is a quilt here and it's got a lot going on too, but once again, I use my walking foot and I did this argyle area. And the way that I did it was I used my ruler and my pencil, I marked the center lines between this one and this one is that ruler distance six inches. Did that across and then all that I did was stitch a half inch away from that original stitch line using that quilting bar again. 
and I've added other elements around. So once again, use it in conjunction with other stitching or completely all over, which I'm gonna show you too. Now this quilt was one of these funky quilts that I made. Um, and I used these stripes throughout. But if you look really close on this quilt, you see that I did a wonky cross hatch. So I literally did a straight line every so often. And then in between it, I did a wavy stitch. And that way it creates this wonderful wonky feel all the way around. Now you can see a little bit closer on the edges there where you can see exactly how the stitches are done with my walking foot. And another way that you can do it, on this one I've done an on point cross hatch to make it look more like diamonds. So depending upon how you angle your ruler lines, it can be a square or you can make it look like a diamond. On this one, completely all over the complete quilt, I did nothing but straight line quilting using my walking foot and look at the amazing effects that you get. And the last quilt that I want to show you, um, I wanted to show you the back as well as the front. Now this one I did a little bit of a custom design once again, where I have basically six inches away and then I did kind of like an argyle effect too, but it will completely cover this entire quilt. It gives it the stitching and the quilting that we need, but also on the background, it gives just a nice finishing touch. So keep in mind, no matter what you do on the front, those stitches are gonna show in the back too. And those are some of the samples that I had that I wanted to show you how easy, effective it is when you use your walking foot to complete your quilts at home. So, are you addicted? I bet you can't wait to pick up Walk or Walk 2.0. These books are literally gonna be your best friend to learn how you can quilt at home using your machine and your walking foot. I hope you learned a little, I hope you learned a lot, and I hope that you feel more confident and are ready to try to do some straight line quilting with your walking foot. It's been my pleasure to be your host for more Sewing with Michelle. Don't forget to come back next week on Monday and don't forget to check out our landing page or go to moors-sew.com where you can pick up the wonderful books that we have for you today. Thank you for joining me and until next week, bye-bye.